Uh, our first artist tonight, uh, she is a worship leader for a recovery church. She is married, has been a secular artist, and has fully devoted her art in the past few years to serving God and for the purpose of drawing people who may or may not know him. So she writes worship, contemporary songs, and songs aimed at evangelism. And one of the more important things that she wants you to know in her spare time as well, she is a chicken farm. She's a chicken rancher. <laughs> yes, she is. she is a chicken rancher. She's a musician by day, chicken rancher by night. Please welcome <laughs> from Se she's cracked up as I say this from Seattle, Washington. Please welcome. What do you think Seattle? You don't think chicken rancher, do you? I guess no. I, I mean, I'm just just a few chickens. <laughs> I think we're a few eggs short of a basket now, all of a sudden here. Uh, oh. Rebecca Ann Curtis joining us from Seattle. Rebecca, good evening. How you doing? I'm glad to be here. Great to Very have you here. here. It was great to have you part of our last uh, Night of Hope live festivities and also Red's Room Live in Seattle. It was great having you part of the festivities along with a bunch of other folks. What what a great night that was. Uh, thank that was you. a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed meeting people in person and um and seeing real people real live and that like was super cool and just the camaraderie that was there was amazing and um it's nice to know that y'all are real people like yes. we, we are real we we don't just hide behind the screen yeah you know, we're, we're right we're, we're we're real people too yeah yeah i'm not an animation <laughs> <laughs> I was concerned that you might have been, and well, then I, and even with Red, he's not even claymation either. I mean, he's he's real too. He's very real. You guys, y'all are very sweet people, and it's clear that y'all love Jesus a lot, and that you're doing this out of love for God, and um, it's it's amazing. And I'm very thank you for inviting me to be a part of this and it's an honor and it's it's amazing and i love it i do it's, it's combining my favorite things jesus oh. and music and people and you, you get that all and and apparently i guess you are coming to the august and so at least at least two of you are coming to this august event in spokane so you're gonna get a little sneak preview tonight uh, in some way, shape, or form here of mm -hmm. what August may end up looking like in some way, shape, or form with some of the performers that are on here tonight. August 6th is the date, uh, Saturday night in Spokane, Washington. I love going over there every single year. Uh, I always make it over there at least once or twice a year. So we're going to be looking forward to going back out there and taking the show on the road uh, about six hours away from where we both are. You, of course, are in Seattle. Now, what, what have you been up to since we last saw you at Night of Hope Live? Have you been doing a bunch of chicken foul things uh no uh, my life has uh, been pretty foul though i got sick uh, oh that's that's some foul play right? oh yeah seriously <laughs> um my feathers got ruffled and i've been coughing and hacking and oh my gosh it's been the worst like i've just been like no and i'm just now like at the tail end of it and starting to feel yeah. better so left us and got sick huh oh. yeah yeah, y'all, I'm not blaming you. I was going to, and then I was like, I really can't blame you guys. She thought the better of it. I did. <laughs> yes. It's like, so there's all, this all, is, all is well now, though, right? Yeah. Oh, well, <clears throat> I have a little bit of a cough, a little bit of laryngitis going on, but I am here. You are here. That, I'm here that's and I'm step listening. one. Step yeah. one. And I will. Now, step two <laughs> now means that. You might have to perform something now. I, yeah, I might. Do I have to? <laughs> well, this would be the segue that I'm trying to get to now. Oh, yeah. okay. Yes, yes. You're performing something now. Yeah. What What might we be starting off with? Um. So we're going to start off with a song that is based on um, a dream I had as a kid. So. All right. Yeah. So my hands are all like gross. But um, I just like looked glanced at the camera and I'm like, oh, look, I got makeup. I got like, I got, I got a uh, nail polish on one hand and I got dirt on the other one. So there you go. We're just being real. <laughs> but um, this song is about um, 
Yeah, is it um when I was a kid, I used to have really bad nightmares. And um no, I'll just play, I'll just play the song and then oh, I remember it so well. The torment, the loss, and the pit of But a voice spoke so quietly, have faith, just believe. From out of the dark and new light, I believed. His patient and loving hand had a hold, a hold of me. Out of the dark and into love, I believe. He sat upon a throne, radiating light. The only thing that could pierce the night. He moved his hand and he broke the chain. And all I knew was his name. From out of the dark and into the light, I believe. His patient and loving hand had a hold, a hold of me. From out of the dark and into the light, I believed. Out of the dark. see his face oh, I'm not special to have seen his grace his arms are wide he welcomes with love the way is open through Jesus Christ his son from out of the dark and into the light Good stuff from Rebecca Ann Curtis right here on the Friday night edition of Red's Room. Ah, so good. So now you're going to tell us a little bit more about that song. Okay. When we came out of that song. So what what is the heart behind that song then? Okay. So um, when I was a kid, I used to have these like nightmares where I would um, like, it was always kind of the same dream over and over again where I would be chased around by an invisible force and um, it would catch up to me and shock me. Like, and I would literally feel it in my dreams. And then I, I would bolt awake every single time and I'd just be like scared. And, um, and these were recurring constant, like I had them a lot. And then one night I had a dream where um, I, I was like, it was kind of like I was like in this big, huge expanse. And the only thing that I saw in front of me is that I saw this, like, I saw a throne and I, and then, and I saw someone sitting on the throne and I saw beings going up towards the throne and I saw beings coming from the throne. And it was like so bright, like the, and I know it was God and I know it was Jesus sitting on that throne, but I couldn't see his face. He was so bright. I couldn't see his face. And it seemed like he was really far away, but like, like, I mean, it was like this big, huge scene I was seeing. And so, um, 
and all the only thing that that he did is that he moved his hand he just he just moved his hand like that and as right after that happened I went is like that that part of the dream ended and then I started to have the dream again where like the um the the monster would come and like shock me and um I and it was a little bit different because it was like I was like it was just me and the monster and the monster ran up to me and I like curled up in a fetal position because I knew it was going to happen. It reached out and touched me and nothing happened, like nothing, nothing happened. And I stood up and the monster like ran off and I've never, and ever since then, I've never had a single dream like that ever again. And I, I really believe that um, one is that that's that if one is that, if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. And that um, it's through the power of Jesus Christ that this happens and that God is good and he does protect us and he will shield us from everything from the devil. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Good stuff there from Rebecca Ann Curtis here on Red's Room. Um, what is next up for you musically now that you're done over being, you know, under the weather and all that type of stuff. But what's next for you musically as we roll through the coming months? Well, let's see. I'm going to be writing more songs because um, uh, I like writing songs and I like sharing songs that I've written. And uh, so I will continue to do that. Um, I'm going to head over to Spokane in the next couple months and be playing. And that'll be fun. And I'll share some music over there with y'all, if you'll let me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think we, I think we will. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and, um, and um, yeah, I don't have any um, recording set up in the near future. Um, it's, I, I kind of have a lot on my plate at the moment. And so Recording's kind of on the back burner, but I want to make sure that I've got some really good songs to record with, you know, because I, I got a lot of, I, you know, you keep writing and writing and writing. For me as an artist, it's like, I, I want to make sure that I'm putting out my best because I've written a lot of songs. Not everything is like, you know, a hit but out if you're of a lot of songs. You can be a little more picky choosy about, you know, yeah. ones that you feel are. Yeah, that will connect with people that people will like and enjoy and be like, yes, I want to listen to this song again. And I want to listen to this song again. And I want to listen to this song again. And I want to listen to this song again. Um, now, I know Prince is not a Christian artist, but um, it is just astounds me the just the trove of music, like the, the like the the amount of music that he made and that he didn't even put out is that he had to write so many songs just to get those few to make a quality albums and so that's that's kind of where where I'm at is is writing trying to write songs that I think that are that will really connect with people for a long term so yeah <laughs> but you're gonna write a lot of you know Yep. Yeah, to get there. You gotta flesh all that out, right? To, no, to, yeah. To, to, it's to a process. Yeah. 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 No, if, if everything I wrote was um awesome, um I would probably be really obnoxious to be around. <laughs> like, look, I, I I made this song and it's amazing. No. We all, we all have to have our humble moments once in a while, don't we? All right. So this is called oh, A Thousand no. Deaths. Oh. Oh, go ahead. Yes. Next song. Yeah, next song. This is called A Thousand Deaths. And I would die a thousand deaths for the name I confess. For on my heart is word is marked and life there imparts. Though flesh and bone will fade away, but 
here on the Friday night edition of Red's Room. Good to have everyone with us here on this Friday night. <clears throat> now, when you sit down to write a song, what usually ends up coming first? Do you usually get the melody first? Do you usually get the lyrics first? Is it just kind of an open canvas when you're sitting down to write? Does it depend on, do you intentionally sometimes sit down with the intention of a certain subject? How does the whole writing process work for you? Okay, so the writing process has changed for me a lot over the years. I used to sit down and be like, okay, I'm going to find the most exciting melody that I can try and sing to. And so I would come up with crazy melodies and then I'd be like, I can't play this melody. <laughs> um, I can't find the chorus play with this melody. And so then I'd have to nerf my melody. And, um, and then I would try and shoehorn lyrics to fit my melody and because I was like the melody is the most important part and then um and then I was like well people would be like I don't know what your song is about and I was like well it's esoteric and then um and then they were like I don't know what that means <laughs> and um and then I was like well maybe I should try to connect with people a little bit better and so I tried writing songs um, that with the goal of connecting with an audience and the, trying to like write songs that they would like, which is really a bad idea to go for because then you have to like, you're either writing for like one person or you're writing for um, pigeonholing. Yeah, or you're writing for a group of people and you're trying to identify like, the and then you got to figure out what they want and how they want to hear it and what's words are okay and what's not okay and then um and then and then um and then i in that process of trying to connect with people i i i ended up with a mentor um through nashville christian songwriters was like the most important part is the lyrics and sat me down and was just like this is the most important part it's not the melody it's this and I was like and I was kind of headed in that direction already because I was like I want to connect with people better than I am and um 
and he really just was like, here's how you do it. And I'm not going to tell you how to do it because he, I paid a lot of money to, for him to tell me that. So, um, I, and it's worth every penny that I paid. Um, and so when I learned that I was like, oh, well, um, it's really focused. My songwriting is to really sit down. And when I craft a song now, it is lyrics focused first that I am writing down and come up with an idea for the song. And then I focus on in on that and what the lyrics are. And then I'm like, okay, cause melody comes to me pretty easily. And so, um, it, then it's like just trying to find a melody that fits with the mood of the lyrics. And, um, sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it's not. It's, um, but um, then there are songs that I write for just me, you know, for my, for my own enjoyment. And it's like, well, I don't care if you like this song or not. I wrote it and I enjoy it and I'm going to play it. <laughs> there's those songs. And then there's songs that um, it's uh, where I'm now focusing on is like, well, cause, cause I, cause I've always wanted to like write worship songs that are, um, no, I don't want to update the flash player. Um, but uh, I, where it's the, the new focus for me is where I'm headed in and what I've, I think is like God just slowly, instead of beating me over the head with a, a, a book or, you know, a bunch of things, which I, I would prefer it if you would do that because it would, you know, happen quicker for me but I think God really likes to just coax us along well at least he likes to like initially I think he like beat me over, it felt like he was be beating me over the head but now it feels like he's like gently coaxing me along at this point where it's like everything is just kind of like gently nudged just to see if I I pay attention and so uh it's for me it's like well writing a worship song isn't for people um and that's, that's the thing is it, it's like, well, it's not for people, is it? No, it's not for people. And it's not for the congregation. It's actually writing to God and for God. And I know that this is like, you're all like, well, of course, that's the way it should be. And I'm like, but as a songwriter for going for like, well, but I want people to enjoy it. And then about other, you know, thinking about other people and for them to enjoy it and I want them to sing it and then I want them to sing it to God but it's like that's that's not where it needs to be is that it starts with really focusing on what on me as a songwriter just writing to God and that's where I think I need to be heading for the for the next while of like it's it's like it's so I know it's it's so dumb because it's like, well, duh. And I know that there's people going, well, you should know this. And I'm like, because I've been writing songs for quite a while, but uh, look, I'm slow. <laughs> just... Well, I mean, so, I mean, sometimes it, even as a songwriter, sometimes you need that reminder. You need that, you know, that refocusing sometimes on what it's all about. Because I know sometimes songwriters can also get discouraged at the same time. Oh, yeah. You know, trying to figure out an ever-changing music landscape. Okay, what, what, what do the people need? What do they want? And right, we just lean into him. He's going to show us what. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what? it's like, I mean, what makes Amazing Grace an amazing song is that it was. It's about Amazing Grace. <laughs> you know, it wasn't. It yeah. wasn't intended to be a you know he what he didn't sit down and pen it and go this is going to be a song that everyone will sing for the rest of eternity which i'm pretty sure we're going to be singing for eternity and i'm happy doing it because i love the song mm -hmm. but that it's that he sat down and he's like this is on my heart this is what god has done and this is what people need to hear and he just wrote it and there's beauty and simplicity like that just yeah simple yeah. it's not easy no easier said than done sometimes i'm sure 
Um, but see, I, I like in the span of less than 60 seconds, Rebecca used the term nerf, shoehorn, and esoteric all in the same span <laughs> in like 30 seconds. I mean, that was the most eclectic, wonderful combo one could have <laughs> there. I mean, where where else besides the Red's Room can you hear the term nerf, shoehorn, and esoteric all in the same span of conversation? I should really think about what I'm saying. <laughs> just throwing out words. It made sense. I'm just like, I was like, it all made sense. I was like, I was like wow, this is, there isn't a lot of vocabulary tonight. And this is great. Oh, um, fun. Uh, <laughs> TJ, an esoteric nerf shoehorn. Oh. <laughs> Oh dear. TJ says, yeah, Rebecca, love your music. Would love to have you sit on sit in on my next scripture song studio next Monday through Wednesday. Oh, how about Ooh, that? That sounds fun. Ooh. Man. Oh, right. an esoteric nerf shoehorn. Uh TJ uh, elaborates further. Uh, he says, e tricky to use, smells funny. <laughs> <laughs> sure tj is like you're welcome <laughs> how was his contributions are they we're like <sighs> we're, we're good we're good we're, 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 we're good all right all right we before, go. before, before tj elaborates even further on to the the smell and functionality of this esoteric nerve shoehorn we're going to get on to the next song. Rebecca, uh, would you be so kind to uh, share with us another tune, please? Oh, I'd love to. I 
just want to know you more. I just want to know you more. I just want to know. Good stuff there from Rebecca Ann Curtis right here on this edition of Red Storm. I think she's got one more to share with us here tonight. Uh, before we do that, though, um, as we look back real quick and, and look ahead as well, what did you enjoy most about uh, the Night of Hope slash Red's Room live experience? And what are you looking forward most to to getting to do it again here in less than two months on the other side of the state? over in Spokane this time around. Okay, well, my favorite part is um, playing, number one, and hanging out with people and, um, and, and enjoying like the whole thing, like enjoying people, enjoying music. Man, I just love playing for people. I really do. I enjoy the interaction i enjoy listening to other artists i enjoy listening to people talk to each other and i enjoy talking to people and so um and then you put jesus in that and and now it's like the most amazing thing ever so that like this it like i don't know it is awesome um what i'm looking for is more of the same but more you know getting to know more people getting to know other people hear other artists see them meet them connect with other people i mean yeah i mean yeah, and we have a directive to pack out the house this time what? we have a directive to pack pack out the house well, we should the capacity we yes, should we do. in spokane and of course like last time we're going to be a couple of days prior we're going to be touring the Spokane, Coeur d'Alene area, you never know what type of shenanigans we're going to find ourselves involved in. Isn't that right, Red? Yes. No. Well, I, it was it was it was G-rated shenanigans. It was the type of shenanigans found on here. It was it was a good to go to the um the river set riverfront park. Yes, the riverfront park is on is on the agenda, home of yes. the, the uh, largest radio flyer wagons, among other things, down there in riverfront. Yeah. And you have to look for marmots. At the riverfront park. Marmots. Yes, marmots. Do, do, do they hang out there? They do. Why am I not aware of this? Wow. I, apparently I'm at, okay. Check this out now. Oh, Vanessa, the Aussie, the Aussie over here in, in the group tonight. Uh, she wants you to clarify what exactly are marmots? It is a giant ground squirrel. Do you know what a ground squirrel is? It's a, like a ground squirrels. There's like they're like um like groundhogs. Like, you know, like uh what are those things that are really cute that um that are in like Africa, but they're rounder and they're like shaped like a football kind of, but they're hairy. And but a marmot's like they're like about 20 to 30. They're yes. Oh. <laughs> how resourceful are we now just uh, all of a sudden pops up this, this that's uh, a marmot right there they look they're a big giant rodent they're huge they're like a 30 pound animal <laughs> i want i want to mention that's quite the article to land on Be, did i read that right but that's about marmot being social means they're dying earlier is that what <laughs> i just saw <laughs> Yeah. Well, anyway, for marmots, being more social means dying earlier. It says so we're not, not sure. Subtle. Yeah, we're not sure why. This is from four years ago. Okay. Social marmots die younger than their more withdrawn 
counterparts. Hmm. So if you're a lone marmot, you live longer than if you were a a, a social marmot. Yeah. All right. You learn something new every day. See who ever said Red's Room can't be educational. <laughs> right. Jesus made marmot. Hey, Vanessa, did you did you learn something from class today? About yeah, okay. <laughs> Cut the thumbs up. All right. <laughs> Well, we'll we'll hear from Vanessa here in just a moment. Uh, here on the oh, she says they are cute. Remind me of really? Okay, now now Wait, she, now she 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 was quizzical about marmots. I have a feeling she just flew this out there just to make us quizzical of. An oh no! Direction. I've seen pictures of quokas. What, what they are, are cute? What, what are Vanessa? What are quokas? They're, they're super cute animals. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> they're like, hi. What 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 oh, are they? What are they a cross between? What what are they exactly? That I don't know, but oh my goodness, they are like they, they look like very cute. They look <laughs> what are they a form of like a koala or something? What are they exactly? Is that a teddy bear koala? Is that I no, no, I, I actually don't know much about them other than they're like really cute. Are, are they like natively found in Australia or? Let me Google and I'll get back to you in a sec. <laughs> okay, well, we'll explore into the uh, the world of quokas a little bit more here in a little bit. And yes, TJ, it's Lake Coeur d'Alene, one of my favorite lakes in the country. Yes, I can't wait to get back on there again. It's been too long. Eagles. Yes, there's a number of them out that way. A few out here. There's a, yeah, there's a place called Eagle Point there, and it's amazing. I mean, you could you, just sit five minutes, you'll see one. It's unbelievable. Yep. 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 Oh, we're gonna have to hit that up. Oh yeah. Oh, 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 oh look at. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm half tempted to read that on air, but I, I don't think I will about <laughs> the Jonas thing. Oh my! Uh, the, the, look how resourceful our producer director Red is. He goes, "The quokka, also known as the short-tailed scrub wallaby, mm -hmm. is a small macropod about the size of a domestic. So they're about the size of a cat." <gasps> Why wouldn't you want this? I. I right in your house and spit it can they be litter box trained this i was about to say vanessa can they be domesticated i mean i don't know they're super friendly so probably there's a chance they, like when you're walking through the parks um like the bushland and stuff They'll come right up to you. So you you've encountered one and pet one and yeah. So um, there's some. I live on the edge of like a reserve, um, Cleveland National Park, and oh. um, there's a tourist park in in there, and yeah, they um hang out in the area, and you can. And there's also kangaroos, and like it's quite a touristy thing, but yeah, they're they're super cute and super fun. Yeah, so you can so pick one up and put it in your pocket and take it home. Uh, I, I'm not um, sure. <laughs> like if you had a big enough hoodie with a big enough pocket on it, you could put it in your pocket. I think it's just like a pouch for a Joey, right? <laughs> well, you'd have to wear like an like a like a like a huge extra like a really large one Joe. with a big extra pouch. <laughs> Nobody knows that you've got it in your pouch, like when like you're taking it home. Oodies. Like an oodie, I, right? I just got one more quick thing to share. Adrian Spencer uh, on Facebook says quokkas are native to Rot Nest Island of the Washington Coast. Is that is that correct? Washington Coast communities. Is, is that? It's on Facebook. Yeah, Adrian but it's he, he's in Australia though. So. Oh, wrong, wrong. W A. Oh, West. Yeah, that's a, that's a well, different. Not, no, 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 no. West no. Australia, probably. Yeah, Western Australia is very uh, different. Ah, sorry about that. I was, I was excited. I thought you guys had quokkas up there, and Rebecca was going to take one home next week. So, <laughs> my bad. Um, I would, but 
it involve a lot of smoking yes, yes. and traveling. Yes, yes, the things that you learn in a uh, res room concert. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if they'd be okay with chickens. <laughs> yeah, note to sell. So if, if Rebecca ever gets over to Australia, I can just picture her wearing an oversized hoodie, just smuggling one in the pocket and then managing to somehow get one back on the plane over here to in Washington. the pocket i could just see this happening I it, could it just... would be in the pocket and i well i would i would arrange it so that it would be like in my belly and then people would be like what are i am be like i'm pregnant <laughs> with the clock <laughs> it's kicking <laughs> maybe a little so might give birth <laughs> While I'm on the plane, just it'll be fine. Oh man! <laughs> yep, I'm watching you now. Watching, watching. <laughs> right, right there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Boy, we went down a rash shenanigan rabbit trail, didn't we? Yes, we did. Okay, <laughs> I know but we do have a concert. Let's get back to that, shall we? I don't know where to go from here now. Uh, you, you, you did have one more song in there somewhere, right, Rebecca? I do, and I, I really want to play another song that I don't have prepared because it would be appropriate. Um, <laughs> wouldn't it? It would be. It, oh. it, it, the I, I wrote a song called Heresy, but and I know I've mentioned it before at the thing, but and it's humorous but I'm going to be serious now. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun with that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Jesus made the quokka. Jesus made the platypus. <laughs> We're okay.
here on Res Room tonight, having a lot of fun here tonight on the program. For those that are wanting to follow you and know more about uh, your music and your journey, uh, especially as you're getting set and ready to join us here in August, once again, for all the fun, uh, tell us the various ways in which we can do so. All right, so there's lots of different ways. Um, I do have a website. Um, it's RebeccaAnnCurtis.com. That's R-E-B-E-K-A-H-A-N-N-C-U-R-T-I-S dot com. Um, it's got links to free downloads of my music there, also to where you can find my music on Spotify. Um, I'm also on Not The Bee um, social media site. Um, it's a news site, but there's also a social side to it. And it is a, um, it's not a free site. You can join it for free for 30 days, but then you have to pay afterwards. Um, and I absolutely love it. It's a, it's a great place for, um, it's run by Christians. It's a Christian community, Christian based faith community. Uh, so there's, there are other people for, of other walks of life that, that are there. And um, it's not a free speech platform, but it is a free communication. So there are rules and it's kind of like mind your P's and Q's kind of a thing. So uh, don't drop any f bombs. Uh, be nice. <laughs> oh, you know, oh, don't. Darn. Yeah, you know. <laughs> um, but um, I'm there, and I'm nobody on not the B. So that's my that's my tag there. So you can find me there. I also run a podcast called more, So you're somebody, but you're nobody. No, I'm not somebody. Somebody else is somebody. She did sign in as nobody. I did sign in as, as, as nobody, yes. You did, uh, you did sign in as nobody. Oh, okay. Yes. Right. I am, but, but my, my nickname on Not the Bee is nobody. So, yeah, I am nobody. Um, also, I, I do have a podcast that um, I, um, I've got about 20 episodes or so it's called unchurched it's not about leaving the church or anything like that because um i was like i'm gonna call it unchurched and then i did got into it, like about 15 episodes and i was like dude there's other things out here and people are calling unchurched like leaving the church and they're like walking away from it and i'm like well shoot that's not what i meant um but i'm gonna still keep the name of my podcast so my it's a parentheses you and parentheses church and it's um, about basic, basically basics of faith. And uh, uh, there's, you can go to unchurched at, uh, yeah, so unchurched.net, www.unchurched.net. And I am there as well. So uh, you can connect with me there. So I'm um, Rebecca Ann Curtis, uh, my podcast and music and social media, not the B, nobody. Nobody. Yeah. No. And are they not the A and not the C either? Or are they just not the B? It's not the B. So it's N O T the B E E. So it's a it's a it's affiliated site with ba the Babylon B. So if you're about to say, is that a play on on words there with with Babylon B? I kind of figured. Yeah. yeah so it's um they they post what they post news that is that's real. And it's so outrageous that it could be on the Babylon B, but it's real. But it's all oh, so it's the opposite of Babylon B, where Babylon B is all satire. This is weird yet true. Yes, weird but true, but uh, real. Some of it is just outlandish, and it's like, oh, I can't believe right. this is actually happening. Um, but there's right. also a social side to not to be so there's the news side and then there's the social side where there's a great community of people that hang out there much like yourself there we go All right. <laughs> well really? if you want to include me in it <laughs> well i don't know you you are nobody uh, this is true and i am so, not liked by everybody 
but anybody does like me and somebody does like me so i thought you're liked by nobody like, well i mean i like myself so I'm, not, so I'm like by nobody yeah okay uh <laughs> Rebecca, thank you for being with us here tonight on Red's Room. <laughs> it was a joy as always. We look forward to seeing you again, of course, if not before then, in August with all of us. Uh, Absolutely. With 100%. all of us, uh, you know, barrel of monkeys over at uh, oh, monkeys and um, and and marmots over in Spokane. Yes. If you see a marmot, take a picture of it. I, I will do that. Yes. Yes. I will do that. This I, 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 and Vanessa and I will have to exchange marmot and quokka pictures. Mm -hmm. Apparently. Yes, that All is right. necessary. Rebecca, thank you very much for being here with us on this edition of Red Zero. Many continued blessings. Thank you for having me.